Today's practical woodworking lesson is going to look at an introduction to measuring and marking out. Now, measuring and marking out is one of the most important processes in practical woodworking. And to begin, it's really important to have a sharp pencil with a good point on it. Now, the first tool that we're going to look at is one that you should be very familiar with already. It's a steel rule. Now, what you mightn't be familiar with are pre and post checks. Pre and post checks for any tool are what you should do before using it and after using it, just to make sure that it's in good condition for you and the others that are going to come behind you. So first thing we do is look at the edges, make sure that they're nice and flat. There's no dents, there's no bumps, there's nothing that's going to give us an inaccurate reading. Now our steel rule, just in case you've forgotten, is a dead end rule. So zero starts here at this flat end. They normally have a rounded uh, edge and a hole for hanging. They always go in millimetres and what they're used for is two things, measuring and marking out. Now to measure, I've got this lovely little bit of sycamore and I can measure it and see that it's 80 millimetres. Now I've done that by making sure that the dead end is flat against the edge of the timber and it's running pretty much parallel with the top. So it's 80 by 165 by 16. Okay, so I've just measured this. Now to mark it out, what I would do if I wanted to mark 15 millimeters from the top edge is really simple. Line it up with the top edge and I'm gonna try and make sure it's parallel once again with this edge and nice sharp pencil and I'm just gonna mark 15. Okay, small little line just to mark the 15. No need to draw a big line, it'll be more accurate when it's small and neat like that. So I'm just gonna put this aside for now. So we've looked at measuring and marking out using a steel rule. If I wanted to measure this workbench, I would need to use something different. A measuring tape. Now this is used for measuring larger objects. I can see this is 615 millimeters long by 280 millimeters. Now it's got this lovely little hook that hooks on and helps give us that accurate dimension, accurate measurement. We've got two little rivets. Let's make sure those are intact before using it and there are no kinks or bends in our tape. It retracts in and out easy enough and our locking mechanism works. So our measuring tape is used for measuring larger objects. This one is in both millimeters, centimeters, inches and feet. So, Pre-checks or post-checks are pretty much the same as the pre-checks for this. Now I'm going to go back to our lovely sycamore for this next demonstration for measuring and marking out. The next tool, something you're going to be really familiar with, a tri-square. What you mightn't know is it's split up into different component parts. The blade, the brass edge, the handle, and we've got some rivets holding the blade to the handle. Now what we check before we start using this is that the blade is nice and straight. The inside angle is definitely 90 degrees. We could use that by using a bit of wood that we know is at 90 degrees or a protractor. We want to make sure our brass edge is nice and flat. It's got no bumps or lumps that are gonna stop it from sitting tight against the edge. So this is our tri-square. Again, it can be used for measuring and marking out. If I want to check this angle, make sure I've got a nice 90 degree cut. You can see it lines up perfectly. There are no gaps. If I check this one, you will see at this age, there's a little gap. That means that that's not a perfect 90 degree corner. Now we're gonna ignore that for now. And what we're gonna do is look at using our tri-square to mark out. I've got my line at 15 from earlier. I marked that with my steel rule. Now how I use a tri-square is really simple. I place it in two hands to line it up, make sure the edge is parallel with this edge, so the brass edge parallel with the timbers edge, that the blade is going to intersect with the mark that I made at 15. Now my thumb is pushing down and across. So I'm holding this really tight. If you were here and you were to try and pull this off me, you would really struggle because I'm using all of my force. So fingers at the back, thumb on top, and I'm pulling and pushing that way. Nice sharp pencil, line it up, one sweeping motion the whole way across with my pencil, 
and I've got an excellent line at 90 degrees from this edge and parallel with that top edge. I can do this round different surfaces using the same technique, pulling this way. I've actually got my finger up so that I can add pressure and I line it up and just do a quick line across. So that's marking out using my tri-square, also measuring using my tri-square. Before I put it away, I'm going to just make sure it's in the same condition that I got it in. My blade's straight, my brass edge is good, my rivets are nice and tight holding the blade onto the handle and my inner edge is 90 degrees. These pre and post checks are really, really important for accuracy. Another tool that provides added accuracy is our marking knife. Now this marking knife is flat on one edge and beveled on the other, okay? We hold it like this. Before we use it, we want to make sure that our tip is secure in the handle. And how we use it is really simple. We use it in place of a pencil. Now for a project like this, I would probably just use a pencil, but if I wanted a really accurate cut or if I was doing a dovetail or a dovetail halving, I would place the flat edge against the blade of the tri-square and I would do draw back in one motion that splits the grain and gives me a real accurate line as the thickness of this is thinner than our pencil. So this is for added accuracy, normally in dovetails or in dovetail halvings. So I'm going to put our tri-square aside for now and our sycamore. And I'm going to introduce some of our gauges that we use in practical woodworking. We've got our marking gauge. Now we've used this before, but we probably haven't broken it down into its component parts. We've got our stem, our stock, our thumb screw, and our spur. Now, before we use this, I want to make sure that my thumb screw, I can tighten it, I can loosen it, and that my stock moves up and down the stem freely and that my spur is nice and sharp. Now I don't want to touch this because it's sharp. So what I can do is test it on a scrap piece of wood or I can do a visual check and that to me looks pretty perfect. Now how this works is you can draw a line parallel to an edge by setting the distance between the spur and the stock. So to draw a parallel line along that edge, I would simply do that. Now I'm gonna bring our sycamore back in. When I'm using a marking gauge, I always place my timber in my bench vise. So I'm just going to tighten this up really, really quickly and show you how I would use a marking gauge on this to mark my line along the middle. Now I can do this two ways. The easiest way is with a steel rule. Now for this, I'm going to place my marking gauge in my left hand. I'm going to loosen up the thumb screw and I'm just going to set my marking gauge to half the thickness of this. Now I measured this earlier, I know this is 16. Half of 16 is eight, so I need to set this to eight. So I place my steel rule flat along the stock so that the spur is pointing at eight. And that is it, perfect. I'm gonna tighten up my thumb screw now when I tighten this, it can move a tiny bit, so I'm going to double check it, okay? Now we always triple check before we do anything in practical woodwork. If we make a mistake, it's often hard to fix it and you might have to start again. So this is definitely set to eight. Now, if I wanted, I could test this in a scrap piece of wood first, but I'm at home, my wood's limited, so what I'm going to do is just go for it. My spur is pointing away from me. I place it on top of the wood. I turn it till the spur touches the wood and I draw back in one sweeping motion. Sometimes I like to add in my, hand, my second hand, my left hand, to just stabilize it a tiny bit better. Okay, one sweeping motion, not stopping. Sharp pencil, fill in the line, okay? Now that will be highly accurate, it'll be parallel to these edges and it should be perfectly in the middle. So this is our marking gauge. Before I put it away, I'm gonna check my spur, I'm gonna check my stock, I'm gonna check my thumb screw and just make sure everything is good for the next person that's going to use this. Now, before we move on, it's important to point out that what we have done is just called 
half ratio dimensioning. Half because it's halfway across the timber and ratio dimensioning because it's half the ratio. Okay. Now, moving on to our next type of gauge. These look quite similar. So here we have a mortise gauge and back to our marking gauge. The main difference is that we have two spurs on a mortise gauge and one on a marking gauge. Now I'm going to get rid of this for now and I'm going to show you the component parts. We have got our fixed spur. This one does not move. And then by pushing here, we can decrease or increase the size of our adjusting spur. We've got our stem, our stock and our thumb screw once again. Now, in school we normally use 18 millimeter pine for mortise joints. The reason we do that is because when you create or use a mortise gauge, you are doing third ratio dimensioning. That means you split your 18 mil pine up into three sections. Now 18 divided by three is six. So each part will be six. We'll have six, six, and six. And that will split it up into three sections. Now the middle section, that six, is determined by these two spurs. So I'm gonna set my two spurs to six mil apart. I'm not gonna do it with the steel rule. I'm gonna cheat and I'm going to use my mortise chisel. So I'm just going to adjust this so that my two spurs are spread so that the mortise chisel just fits in. Now, I can get a steel rule and I can check that. And that's pretty accurate. They are six millimeters apart, okay? So I can set it using my mortise chisel or I can set it by using my steel rule. Now, I need to set the distance between what will be the stock and the adjusting spur to six. I do that in the same way that I set my marking gauge. So I'm gonna put this in my left hand. I'm gonna move it up until the stock is six mil away from the adjusting spur. I'm gonna tighten up my little brass thumb screw, double check it, and then I'm gonna triple check it. And we use this in the exact same fashion that we used our marking gauge. So we would put it in our bench vise. We would point the two spurs away from us. We would touch it on the wood and then we would draw back. And again, I can use my other hand to stabilize it. Nice, smooth motion to get straight lines. So this is our mortise gauge. Do not confuse it with a marking gauge. It's got two spurs, our thumb screw, stock and stem. And our post checks are pretty much the same, ensuring that everything is sharp without touching it, ensuring that the thumb screw is working or stock's moving freely. And the added one for this is our adjusting um, spur moves freely. Mortise gauge. Now, next up, we've got another gauge. This is our cutting gauge. It's got a plastic thumb screw. It's also got these brass straps. Now these brass straps just ensure that this surface is nice and flat and that we're going to get real accurate lines whenever we draw back. So component parts are the exact same. Stem, stock, thumb screw, cutting knife or knife or blade. We set it in the exact same way. We can use our steel rule. So right now I've set that to 15 millimeters. I would double and triple check that, make sure it's at the right size. Now this can be used for cutting end grain, marking end grain, or cutting a veneer. A veneer is a thin piece of wood. And we would use it in the same way, touch, draw back. So just to recap, we have got our cutting gauge, we have got our mortise gauge, and we have got our marking gauge. They look very similar, they have very different purposes and they're used for different joints. So please be careful and select the appropriate one. Remember their post checks and their pre checks are very, very similar. So if you know one, it's likely you can get the marks for the others. 
So that's our gauges. I'm just going to put those aside for now and move on to one of my favourite tools for making one of my favourite joints. This is normally used for dovetails. It is, to put it uh, badly, it's like a tri-square for angles. Obviously you would take the square out because it could do 90 degrees, but we wouldn't do that. We would just go for a tri-square. So this is used for setting other angles and your blade moves freely around, your thumb screw locks it in place. Pre-checks, we're going to look and make sure our blade's intact, it's got no dents, bends, it's nice and straight. Our thumb screw's working so it's gripping our blade tight enough so that it's not going to move when we're using it. Our rosewood handle is nice and flat and our brass ends are sitting nice and parallel with all the edges. So how does this work? Just like a tri-square can be used to check angles, so I can set this to copy that angle or I could check to make sure that angle is perfect if I was cutting it again. So if I wanted now I could check another piece of wood with this like that or I can mark out just by doing it like so. I'm just going to swap away and holding it a bit, okay. And all of those lines will be perfectly parallel with this top edge. So this is our sliding bevel, a great tool, normally used for dovetails. We've got our blade, thumb screw, handle, and we'll tighten it up, make sure it's safe for the next person. My post checks are the same as my pre checks. So I think that's most of our measuring and marking out tools covered today. What I don't have is uh, templates. Now templates are basically used to draw a profile. The reason we use templates is because it's quick, it's accurate and it um, can be used multiple times. Another tool that I do not have is a dovetail template but I will do a video on how to make a dovetail template at a later date. And finally uh, outside calipers. Outside calipers are used to measure doweling, which is round sections of wood or ternary. They work by just measuring over like that, gripping the bit of wood or nipping it, and then you take it away and you would measure it with your steel rule to get accurate readings. I hope you've enjoyed today's little lesson and hopefully soon we'll get to do some practical work and I'll show you how to make some joints.